looking at various types of circuits, we can start to look at a whole sort of canonical structure for both first order, high, low pass, and high pass systems. And you probably are familiar with a couple basic circuits that give you either a low pass or a high pass structure. They might be structures you would see like a low pass filter here with an R and a C, or the high pass structure with the C and the R. And there's also resistor and, and inductor versions of both of these circuits. And you can kind of see the structure. And in all of these cases, you end up getting transfer functions for the low pass as a 1 over 1 plus s tau. And for high pass is an s tau over 1 plus s tau. So very, very similar. Basically, 1 is just an extra derivative, which wasn't surprising given that in these formulations, we always had an extra derivative on the input. And that came from the circuit formulation, looking at this core differential equation. We can also, of course, get these transfer functions directly by taking the Laplace elements and knowing that this resistance of this capacitor is 1 over SC. This also would work. So the question then is, once I have these formulations, I'm very curious to know what would happen if I put an input frequency into the system and look at it single frequency, which means I have the same frequency out because it's a linear system, and then take a look at what is my responses both in terms of my um, magnitude as well as is there any phase shift. Those are the two things that could change in a linear system for a given frequency. Okay, so then we begin to look at this question and go, okay, now um, how, do I, how do these various functions look? Well, if I look at for the low pass filter, I get something at very much at low frequencies. The gain is basically one. Think in the case that, you know, this S tau is basically much, much smaller than one. So effectively, it's going to be pretty much 1 here. And when I'm down in this region, it's pretty much when s tau is much bigger than 1. So I've got 1 over s tau, which if you think about it, is the function that I would have for integration. 1 over s is an integration function. So this is acting like an integration. This is acting like just passing through. In the opposite case, for a high pass structure, I would, at very high frequencies, s tau much bigger than 1, the two s taus disappear, and it's basically just flat. On the other hand, when s tau is much smaller than 1, it's just 1, it's just s tau, so now it looks like a derivative. And you begin to realize these two circuits are doing things such as integration and differentiation in certain regions of operation, and that is the way that we'll often look at it. What's also quite interesting is you get a very interesting phase response. So at near zero, it's near very close to zero. Makes an interesting jump right at what is the corner frequency at 45 degrees and then converges to 90 degree phase shift, which is what you would expect if I was dealing with integration. I see the exact opposite structure of this going from 90 degrees down to zero, going from basically derivative to basically just passing through a, a system that's passing through. So I can kind of look at these and realize these two structures are sort of duals of each other, but there's a lot of richness in all of these dynamics and something we would definitely want to continue to begin to look at and develop as we look through these circuits.